Hey there, this is Akshay Madan. Welcome back to a new video. And in this video, we are going to see a very biggest confusion that students face in the college life, and we are going to solve uh, this confusion. So stay tuned with me. And this confusion is basically competitive programming versus development programming. So when the students enter into college, they are in their first year. They see a lot of things, right? They see people having some high coding skills, like their seniors. some people are good at communication skills some people are good at dancing music arts right but in this video i'm going to pick two major confusion that is competitive programming versus development programming whether you should go ahead with uh, solving lead code problems hacker and code chef problems or you should uh, like focus on building applications mobile applications and web application So first of all, uh, my first point that is common for both the things, competitive versus development. First point is you need to figure the solution of this problem that is competitive versus development by the middle of second year, right? By the mid of second year, you need to figure this out. Whether you are going to go ahead with development phase or you are going to go ahead with competitive programming, because in the third year, in the starting of third year itself. companies will start coming right or you have to find some internships off campus right or you can sit for the internships uh, drive of your college right so because you will require 6 months for better preparation for development uh, for projects or for practicing lead code problems right so by the end of by the mid of second year uh, you need to figure this out that is in your third semester right so this is the first point and is common for both the things second thing is don't compare cp that is competitive programming with dsa Okay, so if you are a computer engineer, if you are into software engineering field, DSA is must for you. There is no choice for you that you can do DSA or you can do some other stuff. No, whether you are going for competitive programming skill or you are going for development programming, you have to do DSA. DSA is what data structures and algorithms. Without DSA skills, you are not a good uh, software engineer, right? You are not good at your coding skills, right? So don't compare competitive programming with DSA. Competitive programming is solving the problems and uh, and rolling for competitions that are held online for jobs and internships right on code chef lead code dsa is the uh, like it is the algorithms they are the algorithm they are the concepts so your concept should be clear there is no choice for you to go at the dsa or some other stuff so dsa is must so these are the two points that you need to keep in mind whether you are uh, like aiming for competitive programming skills or you are aiming for development skills right so now let's get ahead with the first point so my first point is how can you know by yourself that you are a good fit for cp skills or you are a good fit for development skills right so the easiest way to find it out is by yourself uh ask yourself whether you are good in your class 11th and 12th with on these chapters or with this chapters right so my first chapter is permutations and combinations second chapter is binomial theorem then probability and algebra so if you are good in your high school or 11th and 12th class if you are good in these chapters in mathematics then you can assume that you will be able to solve the cp problems of lead code code chef or any other platform very fastly and with a greater approach or with a good approach right in a best time complexity or you will be able to find a optimal solution for those problems now how can you know that you are a good fit for development programming so let's say i give you an app idea or a web idea and you yourself come up with a approach of solving that uh, like problem statement let's say you are coming up with the best designs you are coming up with the uh, schemas models back end front end middleware and you are telling that okay this schema this should be the schema these are the models these are the entities these are the users types of users right and you are able to solve that problem that use case with the help of data structures then you can assume that yes you are good for development programming but if you talk about the cp then you don't need to worry about front end back end middleware servers uh, or all those things you just need to solve that that mathematical problem within that uh, time period and with the optimal approach optimal solution approach right so this is a thing so for dev uh, you should have at least good skills for front end or i mean to say that you should be able to find out the best data structures that should be used for that screen that is given to you by the designer right then you should be aware about the back end about the servers about types of databases or you can say that you should be good uh, with sql queries 
right? Because most of the companies are still using uh, SQL databases, so you should be uh, like aware about the SQL queries. Or if you are, if your company is using NoSQL, then you should know the difference between SQL and NoSQL, right? So this is the thing uh, that this is a basic first point that you can think of if you are trying to choose between CP and Dev in your second year. Now let's say that you have uh, found your skill, your passion, and let's say it is CP. Okay. So in your second year, you have found that yes, I want to go ahead with CP skills. I want to uh, get into man companies like that. So where can you practice them? So the first place is and the best place according to me where I also started it. It is Lead Code, right? Then Code Chef, and then finally you can come to Code Forces. Right. But before all these three platforms, they are quite uh, advanced, I would say, you can go ahead with HackerRank. Start with HackerRank itself in your first year. Okay, if you are still in 12th class and if you are still in first year, then try to get at least five stars in problem solving in HackerRank. Right. And after getting these stars in HackerRank, you can go ahead with lead code problems, code chef or code forces. Because HackerRank problems are really simple. There are the solutions available. And nothing is for uh, it is everything is for free, right? For lead code, you have to purchase the uh, premium version for getting the solution, for getting the discussions kind of I think. But for HackerRank, it is all free. You can start with HackerRank. Now let's say you have uh, chosen that Dev is my passion. I just want to build apps. I'm not aware. Uh, I don't want to get into CP skills or I don't want to practice CP much. Uh, like me, uh, if you are totally you want to, uh, if you are totally passionate about Dev. Then where can you practice it? Actually, there is no such platform where you can practice it. You need to start building projects. So only one method is there uh, to practice your dev skills is by building projects. Whatever idea you have, or if you do, if you don't have any idea, ask your friends, ask your classmates. Do you have any app or web idea? If they have, uh, collaborate with them and try to build that app and web, right? And most probably, uh, it is a high chance, ninety nine percent sure I am that. Whatever code you are going to write for the first time in your second year or in the starting of your third year will not be industry standard, right? So to make that code uh, industry standard look industry standard or to use clean architecture block patterns as we use in Flutter, uh, the big companies are using. So for that, you need to go to a senior or you need to go to a person who is already working in the industry and you need to tell them, please, can you review my code, right? And they will review your code. They will find the mistakes. They will tell that, okay, uh, you are not using comments, you are not using uh, the proper folder structure uh, or uh, this piece of code can be improved or this is a very uh, redundant, uh, like this piece of code is very redundant in your whole project. Please try to improve like that. So these are the sub points that you can get from your senior or a person working already in the industry for your particular tech stack, whether it can be Flutter, React, uh, native side Android, uh, React Native, Ionic, something like that. Right. So for dev, try to make projects and try to get an internship as fast as you can. Right. Now, one more point in CP and dev, the complexity, which is more complex, which is more time consuming. Actually, dev is more complex. I'll tell you why dev is more complex in CP. The road map is very simple. You have to first of all, learn DSA. Then you have to pick a questions sheet and many of the YouTubers are providing their own uh, DSA sheet or TP or uh, like CP sheets that you can practice. So you have to pick uh, sheets that will be for 200 problems around. You can pick them up. You can their solutions will also be available or you can pick one platform lead code code share as I already told and done. Then you can uh, start participating in the contest. Uh, so third will be contest and fourth will be to apply for internships or you will be placement ready. For dev, the roadmap is quite complex. Why? I'll tell you. Because first of all, you need to pick one domain. So dev is divided into app dev and web dev, right? Or you can think it of like this. It is divided into uh, front end, front end skills. So for front end, you can choose Flutter, React or Ionic or many other front end frameworks are also available. You can choose one. Then it is back end. For back end, you can practice Node.js, Express.js, or you can pick one database, Firebase, MongoDB, or SQL databases, Hive databases, Cassandra, right? Or you can choose Spring Boot for uh, your back end, or you have full stack. That is, that is, 
you are the combination of or you are the master of both front end and back end right so this is full stack so these are the like you have to there are a lot of options that you can pick right you can choose app dev web dev front end full stack back end or you can be a master of just databases you can be a master of system design microservices like this so in dev the road map is quite complex but when you choose one thing uh, let's say i chose app dev and uh, yeah so i chose app dev using flutter so after that things become very easy because you have the proper documentation you don't need to follow any cheat sheets or uh, problem sheets you just need to make projects in that particular tech stack right but starting at the starting it is quite complex so this is the thing next point is uh, work so how is the work what is the difference between the cp uh, like the people who do cp very much and the people who do dev uh, that much so what is the difference between the works actually the work is same so cp and dev they are not the different kinds of work the work is same software engineer right so cp is kind of a gateway like j mains or j advanced or sats so it's kind of exam uh, gateway through which engineers or the freshers can enter into different domains right so companies what do they do is they find very difficult to find uh, good engineers or good freshers so they got this cp thing cp skills like practicing problems solving problems within the optimal uh, time period like that so this is kind of an exam which fresh freshers they get into and if they uh, like pass their exams then they get, get into mag companies or companies which are hiring uh, on the basis of this exam or like cp exam or bsc exam right so there are many companies and most of the examples are mag companies microsoft amazon netflix or google facebook all these companies are hiring through this thing like competitive programming skills right talking about the dev i'll uh, share one uh, sheet with you the uh, which has all the companies which are hiring without any uh, cp skills or without any cp uh, exam that you need to crack right they are just going to uh, judge you on the basis of dsa and your development skills your projects right so this is a thing i am going to uh, share one sheet and it has more than uh, it has around 800 companies uh, in that list and you can uh, see if these companies are hiring for internships or for uh, complete job roles right so for dev the pattern will be or the judgment thing will be your projects and your on the spot skills right now finally talking about my personal preference uh, i have already given preference to dev uh, why because uh, according to me cp is kind of overrated uh, just to get into companies uh, students just run behind cp they get into peer pressure like my uh, friend has solved already 600 plus problems on lead code my friend has solved these many he has participated in these many competitions on code chef i think it's kind of overrated when you enter into companies you have to build apps you have to build websites you have to build web apps so finally you have to do dev work only development side work only right there is only one advantage of cp that i see is uh, your data structures and algorithm skills uh, become very strong right because here you are into competitive world you are competing with others uh, for dsa skills right and uh, talking about the dev uh, i think dev um, it is my personal preference because you have to do finally this work only the dev work only why not to start with the second year right so i basically do the dev only dev i do and sometimes i practice problems on lead code just to nourish my dss skills i don't enter into any competitions on code forces or i don't run behind my rankings or my stars on these platforms right so i just try to nourish my development skills and my dss skills okay so i hope you like this video i hope it was useful for you i hope you it will help you to take a final decision if you are in second year or if you are late also if you are fresher also if you have uh, if you are already having some uh, industry experience and you want to get into some of these fields or if you are in, from some other branch from mechanical or civil branch and you want to get into software engineering field so i think this video will be helpful to take one decision uh, i have covered all the points do check out the description and do uh, follow me on linkedin and instagram till next content keep coding keep innovating and thanks a lot